Mills Young here. Who's ready to bet on UFC? Me, the asshole. So I'm back. UFC fight night. Johnny Walker taking on Anchor Live Part 2. First off, Happy New Year. Welcome to 2024, man. Over here, all we're about is cashing bets, having fun, getting money, and cashing more bets and watching UFC. If you guys are okay with those terms, you guys can come on with me. All right, man. The first card of the year. And, man, we had some time off, you know, to go over all these fights and this stuff, you know. We had been without fights for about a month or so, damn near. Or it felt like it. Probably three weeks. But you know how it is. Sometimes they take away something from you. Then you come back and you really appreciate it more. That's how it is over here, man. I am so glad we got UFC back and any MMA just to bet on and watch. I mean, it's one of the best combat sports out there, if you ask me. I love football. I love basketball. I like baseball. But there's nothing like seeing somebody get punched in the face, choked out, kicked in the head, or just knocked unconscious, man. So let's go ahead and get it started, man. But before we do, let me know who's going to be your breakout fighter this year. Who do you think's going to really take that next step? Let me know in the comments below or let me know later on in the show. All right. First fight of the night, man. We got Felipe Burns, 13 wins, 6 losses, taking on Joshua Van, 9 wins, 1 loss. Uh, and, you know, that's it. Joshua Van, 2-0 in the UFC. Last time we seen him out, he was getting the job done. Looked good. In this fight, he's a minus 250 favorite. Taking on Felipe Burns. Felipe Burns making his UFC debut. Okay, uh, I did see him fight previously last year on the LFA scene. Okay, um, he, he's, a, he's a good fighter. I like Joshua Van in this spot, man. Joshua Van's explosive. I think he set the record in his last fight out for... Uh, uh, attempts or strikes. This guy is good, man. Um, he's as advertised. I think minus 250 is a nice price tag if you guys are looking for a parlay piece. I think Joshua Van gets this one done. And I think we see... Mm, I, I, th I think we see this one... Mm, damn, is it going to distance? No, nah, first fight of the year. This one ain't going to distance. I see this fight. It's going to finish. Second fight on the night, man. All right, man. This fight right here, Tom Nolan made his debut uh, on the Contender Series. 6-0 and uh, from the Australia scene, you know. Um, in his Contender Series fight, he looked awesome. Opened up at a minus 250. Now he's all the way up to a minus 325. On the other corner, you got Nicholas Mata, 13 wins, 5 losses. Okay, his last time out, he was fighting Trey Ogden. He didn't look good at all. Um, it was a fight that everybody thought Nicholas Mata should win and could win. He didn't put best his best foot forward in that uh, fight. But both these guys are strikers. Both these guys like to bang. Let's go ahead and get it started, man. This is one of the fights I'm really looking forward to, man. Tom Nolan, he's out there. He's striking. He's putting people to sleep. Okay, but when he's throwing his strikes, sometimes you got to look at him. He's not trying to block a punch. He's not trying to dodge a punch. He's not even trying to step back. He's all about coming forward. Nicholas Mata, he's going to give you those punch out bras that a fighter wants to go with. And everybody's going to be probably betting on Tom Nolan because of recency bias. And they're looking at Nicholas Mata like, man, he just got knocked out and finished. He's probably going to get in this one. I parlayed Tom Nolan when he was a minus 235 earlier on. Um, now at a minus 325, a little bit too high for my liking in here. I think this fight doesn't go the distance, but I think Tom Nolan gets this one done. Um, next fight on the card, Gene Silva, 11 wins, 2 losses. Minus 1,000 on you guys, folks. There you go. Taking on Weston Wilson, 16 wins, 8 losses. I'm going to keep it short and sweet. I got a new philosophy. I don't think anybody should be minus 1,000. Yep. It's, it's MMA, it's UFC. You never know what can happen. Um, we didn't see miracles happen before. But John, John, Gene Silva looked good, though, man. He made his debut on the UFC Contender Series. Um, you know, but in his last three years, before he did that, he's making his UFC debut now on this one. He hasn't been really too active um, on, on the scene. You know, only about three or four fights. Um, you know, Weston Wilson, he got fed to the Wolves. Facing Joe Anderson Brito, his first fight out, he got finished real quick in there. Um... Like I said, my saying, I don't think anybody should be minus a thousand. But um, maybe if he goes out there and finishes him within like the first three minutes of the first round, maybe he is. But uh, yeah, I think Gene Silva gets this one done. Ain't gonna spend too much time. Next fight's gonna be a banger, man. I mean, one of the better fights on the card, I think. Uh, 
Highly display a mixed martial arts on both sides. Farad Basharad, 11 and 0, undefeated, taking on Taylor Lapid. So 19 wins, three losses. All right, man. Farad Basharad, man, last fight out, he was taking on uh, Damon Blackshear in a fight that was back to back. Real good, real, real, a real good test for him. Okay. He's the type of guy that goes for the takedowns relentlessly. He's clean with the strikes, too. He sets them up. He's not just going for takedowns out of nowhere. Mm -hmm. He has his brother that he trains with. They've been putting together a nice little fight catalog in the UFC. Nobody's been able to take him down and beat him. Taylor Blackless on the other side. He just came back to the UFC after he was on uh, some regional scenes and taking care of business. He made his uh, comeback over a fighter uh, in Laughlin. Uh, you know, I was making his UFC debut and it was a close fight. Good fight. I had Taylor Lapis in that one. He cashed in that one. He's man. He he's a he's a all complete fighter. If you ask me, um, you know he's good at everything. Um, one thing that he struggles with is takedown defense. One thing that Basharat is great with is t is takedowns. Basharat opened up a minus three hundred favorite. Now money's coming in on Lapless. Now he's down to a minus two seventy five. I like Lapless in this one, man. I think he can keep it close a little bit. And if this just stays on the feet or if he doesn't stay down once he gets taken down and is able to get up and, uh, you know, keep this on the feet, I think Taylor Lapis could maybe get this one done in here, man. I'm going to go ahead and say this is the first one. I'm going to say the dog's out the cage in this one. I like both these fighters, though. Uh, Boshard is is great. Um, You know, it's just I just see value on the other side and I see ways for him to win, too. I definitely can make a case for Basharat ways to win as well. Um, so, yeah, let's go ahead and get it done, man. Taylor Lapis gets it done. First dog out the cage. Let's surprise him on that one. Next fight going to be taking place, man. It's going to be another banger one, man. This one, hmm. Marcus McGee, eight wins, one loss. Goes by the Maniac. Going to be taking on Gaston Bellano, seven wins, three losses. Marcus McGee opened up a minus 250 favorite. 2-0 two oh in the UFC. Bolanos made his UFC debut, uh, you know, uh, who is it against? Aaron Phillips, I want to say, or somebody. Got the job done, got the win. Uh, but before that, he was in Bellator, got the win in there. And he had a couple of losses in Bellator as well. Both these guys, though, man, explosive strikers. This is going to be a fist fight, a striking fight. A great fight to watch. I don't think the fight's going the distance. Marcus McGee has a 100% finish rate. Uh, Bolanos only been to decision once or twice in his fights. Um, Marcus McGee, a minus two fifty favorite. That's where he's at. A lot of people think that line is not warranted. Um, hmm. I think this is going to be a great fight to watch. I have an interview out with Marcus McGee. If you guys want to get more uh, details on what he's been up to for this fight, you guys could check it out at MMA Locker Room. Um, yeah, we talked about a few things uh, about this opponent. Just so you guys know. Uh, he was supposed to fight him already, uh, and this fight got canceled. He got another fight, Marcus McGee did, and then the UFC still rebooked it. So the matchmakers really want to see this one, and I don't think it's going to disappoint. If Marcus McGee is going to go out there and get the job done, I think he wins within round two, man. Oh, uh, yeah, man. Uh, the, the, when he touches people, man, they just go to sleep, man. Like, it is what it is, man. Training over there at the MMA lab, too. Um, yeah, he, he's been putting in his work and putting in his time. Uh, 2 and 0 in the UFC. We cashed with him first as an underdog uh, when he came out. But, yeah, man. Bolano, though, he, he's good, too, man. Uh, um, I, I want to see both these guys and see what they do in this division. Next fight taking place. Matthew Simsenberger. 11 wins, 6 losses, taking on Preston Parsons. 10-4. Matthew Simmons Burger, minus 135 on the books. Okay. We come back on Preston Parsons, plus 110. All right. Matthew Simmons Burger has big power in his hands. He can put anybody to sleep. When he touches people, too, they tend to go to sleep. Uh, but his last fight out, he was on the wrong side of that, man. Um, Yeah, he took the loss. I want to say, I think it was against Ur Urso Medic, I want to say. Um, Preston Parsons. He's a guy out there where he's going for takedowns after takedowns. That's just his way of wrestling and fighting. He was fighting against Trevor Giles and wasn't able to get it done in a close fight, though. A close fight that I was actually there to see it in San Antonio. Um, but besides that, man, you're going to have a, pretty much a striker versus a wrestler grappler in this one. I usually go with the wrestlers and grapplers in there. I went with Preston Parsons in that last fight. I think Simsenberger could get this one done, and the price tag ain't too bad, man. Um, yeah, uh, Matthew Simsenberger, 
he's he's a little bit above average, man. And Preston Parsons, the only thing he got is those takes downs. And if he's not able to take you down, he don't got nothing for you. And he does slow down as the fight goes. Next fight on the card. Andrew Alosky, the pit bull. Alosky. Hold on. I know why y'all remember Alosky. He used to come out with all the chest hair, the curly hair, jumping around like a wolf. That's him. Andre Alosky still fighting. 34 wins, 22 losses. Taking on Waldo Corto Acosta. 10 wins, 1 loss. Waldo Corto Acosta is like a minus 700 favorite. All right. He's 2-1 and one in the UFC or 3-1 and one in the UFC. Costa is, okay? He only fought people who's not really the best in the... And shouldn't be fighting in the UFC. His fight resume is pretty much trash. Uh, his one fight that he did get a step up in competition against Marcus De, De, Lima, De Lima, he lost by a lot, by a decision. But this guy's clean, though, man. He's got he got heavy hands, good boxing. Uh, you know, a lot of people think that he was a fighter that could gas out or would gas out, but he doesn't. He, he could go the distance with you. Uh, Andre Olowski, though, go ahead, go, go. He's just been getting knocked out, okay? Back to back to back, fight after fight, okay? Um, In this fight, I think if he keeps this one close, oh no, not even close. If he keeps this one on the scorecards, and if it goes to the judges, I didn't see the judges give Olowski decision after decision, man. Man, so if you're Acosta, you you want okay, you want to finish him, okay? You want to and yeah, Acosta, you want to finish him. You don't want this to go to the scorecards, okay? I think Costa gets this one done, but like I said, if it goes to the decision, I think Arlowski's gonna uh, you know hand, <laughs> get the hand, hand raised. All right, next fight taking place. Anger alert. Bruno Ferreira, two, 10 wins, one loss, taking on Phil Haas, uh, 12 wins, five loss, okay? Bruno Ferreira, slight favorite, minus 125, uh, one and one in the UFC. His last time out, he got flatlined uh, by a prospect that a lot of people were sleeping on. Phil Haas, though, man, he's a great guy out there. He can put everything together when he's doing his thing. You're, you're going to be looking at him and saying, dang, yeah, he should be the next prospect, man. His physique is crazy. Good hands, great wrestling, uh, great takedown defense. Um, you know, doesn't have the best power, you know, doesn't put people out. But the wins on his, uh, you know, resume so far has some nice ones, though. But he's been knocked out a couple of times. A couple of times more than likely, man. Uh, you know, that chin on him, it seems like when he gets hit, he just goes out and goes out. That's it, you know. Um He's a plus. Uh, he's an underdog in this one, though, man. I'm going to be honest, man. Bruno Ferrer, I think. He's one punch knockout or bust, you know. I think Phil Haas can use his wrestling and get this one done in there. I don't think he's going to go out there and just go try to bang. I think he's going to fight this, one of the smarter ways in there. I like Phil Haas, man. Give me the dog in there, man. Phil Haas, man. We're coming for the win. Next fight, take it place, man. All right, we got a banger. Ricky Simone, 20, 20 wins, four losses, taking on Mario Bautista. 13 wins, two losses, man. Ricky Simone, minus 180 on the, on the books. Mario Bautista, nice comeback as an underdog. Ricky Simone is one of those wrestlers in the division that's just going to go for takedowns when he wants to. Go for takedowns, but he's been mixing it up with his hands, getting way better. All right, he's been looking good in the UFC. Wins over Jack Shore, but he's coming off a loss over against Sonya Dong. Got finished in the fifth round. Nothing's wrong with that. Mario Bautista, he's been a guy that's been finishing the guys that he's supposed to, okay? Uh, you know, uh, but his fight resume isn't the best, but he's doing what he has to to get it done. Clean striker, uh, you know, good at everything, too. If you go for the takedown, watch out. He might just try to sub you as well. Um, he's an explosive fighter. Some fighters fight to fight. Sometimes fighters fight to finish. Seems like, uh, you know, he's a fighter that's been able to put together a nice little win streak and everything. But in this one, yeah, I like Ricky Simone, man. I'm going to be honest, man. He's one of the guys that I used to always back and bet. I'm not going to stop now. Um, You know what I mean? Coming off of one loss, man. I think Ricky Simone gets this one done. Next fight on the card, Jim Miller, 36 wins, 17 losses, taking on Gabriel Bonitas, 23 wins, 10 losses. Gabriel Bonitas has been on a one-year layoff, okay? Jim Miller has been way more active in the division. They opened up as a pick -em. Now Jim Miller is a minus 130 on the books. Ain't going to spend too much time. I think Jim Miller gets this one done. Um, you know, uh, Gabriel, if it goes to the third round and if Gabriel Bonitas is looking like a new guy, but when you have a one and a half, uh, a year, a year layoff, a year layoff and a half, one and a half year layoff, like I was saying, 
and you're not like around the scene training with guys and people's not seeing you and you come back, you usually don't come back in your best form. I don't think he is in this one. Minus 130 for Jim Miller. I think he gets it done. Next fight on the card, co main event. All right, Manel Cape, 19 wins, 6 losses, taking on Martellus Nikolai. This is a rematch, folks. Both these guys fight already, okay? And when they fought, Nikolai got his hand raised. It was a close fight. A lot of people thought it could go either way. Cape thought he won. A lot of people thought he did, too. Now, it's back, man. And now Cape's the big favorite, man. Minus 260 on the books. Why? Because he's been finishing everybody he's been looking uh, in the cage with, man, locking in. Uh, Nikolai... He was looking good until his last fight against Roy Val. Now, man, he's going to have a big, tough taste against Manel Cape. Hold on, Asen. I think Manel Cape gets this one done, man. All right? I think he finishes him, too. Um, That's going to be my uh, prop for this fight. I think he wins inside the distance. So go ahead and take Manel Cape in there to get it done. Main event time, folks. Another rematch, man. Johnny Walker takes on Magomed Ankalaev, man. Magomed got up with Ankalaev. 18 wins, 1 losses, 1 draw. Uh, Johnny Walker, 21 wins, 7 losses. Okay, both these guys fought already in a fight that got stopped because... The referee stopped it because he thought that Johnny Walker couldn't see or couldn't do something. Like, it was just weird and awkward and bizarre. Back to the basics. Anka Live's a minus 600 favorite. I don't think he should be that at all, man. Johnny Walker's explosive. He's one of those guys to where when John Jones had the title, a light heavyweight, when he was coming up, we thought, hey, man, maybe Johnny Walker could be the guy to just do what didn't happen. Long story short, Johnny Walker, explosive guy, unpredictable, don't know what he's going to do. Jump, flying knees, uh, hits you from weird angles. He's looked like he's getting punched, knocked down, then he knocks you out. That's the type of guy you got. I think Johnny Walker's live in this one. Anka Live's a great guy. Seen him fight live against uh, Jan Blockowitz in a fight that they thought he won, but they gave it the draw. Is that the dog? Could be the dog. I think Johnny Walker's live in this one, man. I think Anka Live gets a one. But I think I thought, uh, Johnny Walker's live in this one. All right. Now, look, man. If you guys want to see what I'm betting on, my best bets, head on over to the site Pick Dogs. We got it all up there for you. Can't go wrong. All right. Mills Young here. Hit the like button. Let me know what you guys are betting on, man. If you, I'm just happy UFC's back. And the dogs is barking higher Pick Dogs. See you guys same time next week. Can't wait for the pay-per-view events.